the Ford Dealers of America present the Fred Allen Show. The Fred Allen Show with Fred's guest, Basil Rathbone, Fulton Hoffa, Minerva Pius, Peter Donald, Parker Fenley, the DeMarco Sisters, and Al Goodman and his orchestra. And this is Kenny Delmar speaking for your Ford dealer. It has been years since any new development in trucks has created such a sensation as the new line of Ford trucks. In the first place, they're tomorrow. Hey, it's Sunday night again. Here comes Fred Allen and his new Ford to keep his weekly date at the corner of Main Street. As Fred turns to lock his Ford, he hears a voice saying, Mr. Allen! Portland, Jesus. <laughs> Portland, what is that uh, What is that poster you just tacked up on the telephone pole? Uh, this is Natural Health Week. Natural Health Week. Well, it's about time we had a health week. Lately, we've had nothing but disease weeks. <laughs> Sinus week, have your appendix out week. Get a friend to look in and see if your tonsils are infected week. <laughs> if people observe Natural Health Week, they'll live forever. Oh, that's bad. If people live forever, what will become of the undertakers? They'll all be busy. Busy doing what? Burying doctors. <laughs> you mean if people are all healthy? The doctors will starve to death. Oh, that's ridiculous. The doctors are so rushed today, they're calling the latest sickness Virus X. They haven't even got time to think up a name for it. <laughs> I read that some of uh, I read that some doctor's laboratory uptown is selling mouse milk for ten thousand dollars a quart. Only a quart to a customer, one quart. How do they milk the mouse? Well, they use tweezers and a small Dixie cup. <laughs> and a man with a light touch, I understand. Holds <laughs> me on excellent authority, which I check out later. On the <laughs> what do you say? What do you say? <laughs> That's awful. I'm stealing from Mari Amsterdam. I never heard of mouse milk. Well, I tell you what. They have a mouse dairy uptown. If you pass there at sundown, just before milking time, you can hear the mice mooing in their stalls up there <laughs> and chewing their junior cuds as the day comes to a close. Well, Portland, what's new this week? Billy Rose just got back from a trip round the world. Oh, I saw him in Lindy's. Happened to look under a table and he was standing there. <laughs> <laughs> With his hat on, too. They have my <laughs> hat Billy is... Uh... <laughs> Billy spent two days in London and came back with a British accent. Oh, I heard when Billy Rose goes to his country home, he lives like an English gentleman. He rides to the hounds? He doesn't have to. Well, why not? With Billy Rose's money, the hounds come to him. Oh, say, they, the dogs are going to the Rose, eh? <laughs> well, this, uh, this is getting silly, Portland. I think I'll go along and get my paper. May I come, too? Oh, sure. Come on, let's take a walk down Main Street. <laughs> Say. Say, here's a political ad. Look at this. Alonzo Squires is running for the city council in Charlotte, North Carolina. Imagine he's got an ad way up here in the New York paper. <laughs> Look at this. A thought for today. What is this? The emptiest man in the world is the man who is full of himself. Say, here's something. Don't bother with that. We'll take it up. I'll ask questions later. <laughs> Here's something. Look at this. The Secretary of the National Education Association says that schools are not neglecting the three R's and that he also claims here the techniques of teaching are vastly improved. Do you think the methods of teaching are better? Eh, say, it's so long, since, <laughs> so long since I went to school, I don't even know, Portland. I tell you, I'll ask some people now as we're walking down Main Street. This man coming along drooling on his lapel to keep his gardenia fresh. <laughs> Pardon me, sir. What do you want to say Claghorn's the name? Send it to Claghorn, that is. Well, sir. Don't hem and haw, son. Shoot it to me. What's on your mind? Well, I... Let's go, son. I'm busier than the glutton loose in a pantry. Uh, <laughs> you're, uh, you're busy? Well, me and Harry opened the baseball season down in Washington. Harry threw out the first ball. Did the president enjoy participating? You couldn't stop him. The way things are going, Harry will play ball with anybody. <laughs> Good. I couldn't wait to throw that first ball out to the Washington team. Why? It was the first time this year the senators took anything from Harry. <laughs> <laughs> that 
sir, I noticed, I noticed that Governor Dewey went to the Yankee game. Yeah, I've seen the picture in the paper, son. Yes. First, I didn't recognize Governor Dewey with that mustache. No? I thought it was some man eating a Hershey bar sideways. Oh, I... <laughs> well, I read that, um... I read that Mr. Dewey is going to Europe. Well, he's doing the smart thing, son. Going to Europe? When he comes back, Dewey's going to enter the country as an immigrant and start all over. <laughs> well, Senator, what about scattered applause, you notice? I'll let it accumulate and give it to you in a lump later. <laughs> Senator, what about our question tonight? Do you think the techniques of teaching at school have improved? Well, son, the foundation of our American school is the three R's. The American... What about foreign schools? Russia has the three R's. Russia has the three R's? Poland's R's, Hungary's R's, and Bulgaria's R's. <laughs> How about teaching in this country, Senator? Well, son, the greatest teacher in the U.S. today is little old Harry Truman. He's the greatest teacher? At the last election, Harry taught 40 million Republicans a lesson. So oh, long, son. So right. long, Harry. Now, come on. Come on, Portland. What are you stopping for? Look at this sign. Outside the tavern? Uh-huh. It says, no parking. Let me see. No parking near tavern. This is a loading zone. <laughs> <laughs> Look who's coming out of the bus station. Who? Titus Moody. Hi. Hi, Mr. Moody. How are you, Bob? <laughs> That's some suitcase you have there. Yeah, it's cellophane. A, a cellophane suitcase? Why, look, you can see right through it. Comes in mighty handy. Well, how? If I'm looking for something, I hold up my suitcase. Yeah? If I can't see what I'm looking for, uh huh. I know I got it on. Well, that's... <laughs> well, Mr. Moody, about this school business. Now, do you think the teaching methods have improved? Oh, shucks, I don't know nothing about school. Oh, really? No. My whole family was so ignorant there was a law against us. <laughs> you, were, you were really ignorant, eh? Yeah. My pa not only didn't know nothing, he didn't suspect nothing. <laughs> my, my ma, she drowned two of my brothers before she knew they were children. <laughs> hey, that's, that's, uh... That's pretty bad. And my uncle, Snavely Moody, yes. he he didn't even know he was supposed to wash himself. Not till he see a cat doing it. He, uh, <laughs> he got the idea from the cat, eh? Uh, every Saturday night, my uncle would sit around in front of the stove lapping himself. <laughs> well, tell me, how, how do you feel about learning? Why, everything depends on the teacher. I see. The little country school I went to, the teacher taught arithmetic by counting off her toes to the oh, class. Oh, the teacher would count on her toes? Yeah, uh, she'd put her two big bare feet up on the desk. Yes. But the little toe on her right foot was missing. Well, did the missing toe bother her arithmetic teaching? Oh, it sure did. How? Till I was 40 year old, I thought five and five was nine. So long ago. <laughs> Look, Portland, look, a, a new bakery just opened on Main Street. Oh, Mama says it's run by a midget. How does your mother know the bakery is run by a midget? All they sell is shortcake. Oh, I see. Well, I get it. <laughs> Very good. Semi-clever, I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> look who's coming out of the bingo game. Mrs. Nussbaum, tell me, how did you do playing bingo? My luck a horseshoe should have. <laughs> you, uh, you are not bringing home the bacon? Not to my home. <laughs> well, I couldn't stop tonight. I'm in a hurry. I couldn't talk anymore. What, Mrs. Nussbaum? It's too bad. Oh, Mrs. You... Nussbaum couldn't stop. Well, what do you know? Well, it's all right. I tell you, I'll try this little man coming along carrying the green flag. Hi, buddy. Hey, hey, what do you oh, do? Oh, how do you do? do? Oh, how do you do? Ajax Cassidy. What is that green flag with the gold harp on it, Ajax? Ellen Gobra. You mean you're celebrating? Haven't you heard the news you hear that Infidel Ireland is free? Have you been celebrating all week? Ah, oh, me boy, as soon as word reached Kerrigan's, we all drank a toast to the Republic. Yes. Then we drank a toast to Eamon de Valera. Yes. Next, a toast to King George. Yes. Then a toast to Martin Downey. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Then, then a voice said, this drink is on the house. On the house. How we all got up there, nobody knew. <laughs> well, 
The new republic is off to a great start. Uh, sure, no, no, we can concentrate. Concentrate how? With the English out of Ireland. Yes. We can keep the fighting among ourselves. <laughs> Well, now that Ireland's free, a great injustice has been remedied. Uh, only one injustice remains. And what is that? The greatest injustice of the world is that money is green and the Irish have so little of it. <laughs> me especially. Well, tell me. <laughs> tell me, Ajax, what about schools and teaching? Ah, uh, me boy, to me, schools are a waste of time. How do you mean? Well, if you're born in Ireland, you only have to learn one thing. And that one thing is? How to get to America. Goodbye, you. So long, <laughs> Come on, come on, Portland. Let's stop in the music store. I have a surprise for you tonight. A new song? Ah, yes. But this is a song with a little story. Last October, when you and I started walking down Main Street, Al Goodman wrote a few bars of music, which he called the Alan Stroll. You know the music. Well, so many people wrote to Al Goodman asking what the music was, if it was a song, that Al decided to use the few bars as a theme and compose a song. Mitchell Parrish, the man who wrote the lyrics for Stardust, has assembled the words. And tonight, for the first time, Portland, the five DeMarco sisters will sing the new Al Goodman, Mitchell Parrish number, Carousel of Love. Here I go again, riding on the carousel of love. Round and around, round and around, round and around. Again, spring is here and skies are blue above. I should be where, but I don't care. What do I care? Riding the carousel of love. I thought that I was smart, careful with my heart. Love and I were really through. But that was long ago. How was I to know that I'd need lovely you? So here I go again. Riding on the carousel of love Round and around, round and around Round and around Head over heels in love with you Wait a minute, Portland. Just wait outside the music store here. Here comes Kenny Delmar. See, there's some fellow with him. Well, hiya, Fred. Uh, meet a friend of mine, Speedy Simpson. Speedy is the world's fastest talker. Really glad to meet you, uh, Mr. Simpson. Thank you, thank you. Wonderful to be here. Wonderful to be here. Glad to be here. Glad to be here. How do you do, Mr. Allen? Well, I'm, uh, I'm uh, taking Speedy over to the Ford dealer. There's so much to say about the new Ford. I think a fast talker like Speedy can say it all and save the dealer some time. Uh, show Fred what I mean, Speedy. Well, I want to put out the past on the model for the characters. It's a quick to the mystery, which is the latest thing revolving wheels. And that one, the Fashion Academy Award. Oh, say. Yeah, you. you see, Fred, in two seconds, Speedy told how the New York Fashion Academy picked Ford as the fashion car of the year because Ford is ahead in design and style appeal. Say, he sure did. Speedy covered everything as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, <laughs> when it comes to describing the wonderful feeling you get when you drive the new Ford, that smooth midship ride, those sofa-wise seats, those magic action brakes, 
If I would take the average talker all day to describe the new Ford Field, see how long it takes Speedy to do it. I'll take Rodan to point out the distance of the standards of the new Finkel, which certainly is ended by the rheumatic tire. And what's more, take a look at any pair and you see the model of the big picture windows and choice of engines V8 or 6. Four seconds. Right. Four <laughs> seconds. Right. Right. It. Speedy told the whole story, and he also mentioned Ford's recent price reduction. Oh, wait a minute, Kenny. I didn't hear that. I didn't hear that about the price reductions. Was oh, that in there, too? Fred, I heard it I didn't decipher it. just got away from me. Well, I, I was following him right up to the up end to of the V8 eight engine, but the price reduction got away. But Speedy doesn't miss a trick. But how can you anyone understand Speedy? Well, if you can't understand Speedy, just go down to the Ford dealers and see the Ford's good looks. Drive it and feel the difference. And those lower prices speak for themselves. Let's go, Speedy. Yeah, we'll be here. We'll be here. We'll be here. That's the end. That's not so long, Mr. Now, don't mention it, Speedy. So long, Kenny. So long. <laughs> Come on, Portland, what now? Isn't this where the circus is playing? It sure is. Well, you used to know when the circus was in town. Well, not anymore. The circus carries a nail wick two blocks long now. <laughs> well, are, you, uh, well, are, you, uh, are you turning here? I have to see Mama. Oh, your mother? She's standing in line at the Radio City Music Hall. Oh, really? And I have to go every three hours and bring Mama something to eat. Oh, really? I heard the Red Cross was opening a small <laughs> place in front. Well, see you next Sunday, Portland. Good night. Good night. Say, this man coming out of the bookstore looks familiar. Well, Fred Allen. Basil Rathbone. <laughs> This is a surprise, Basil. I thought you were still on the road with your play, The Air. And old Fred, I just finished an eight-month bus tour across the country. You lived eight months on a bus? Mm Mm-hmm. Did you stop overnight at hotels? No, we slept on the bus. Oh, you had berth? No, every night the driver handed each passenger a pillow and a sleeping pill. Oh. (laughs) What what did you do about eating? At mealtimes, we'd stop along the road at a Howard Johnson stand for two minutes and have a malted milk. You had to drink your malted milk in two minutes? It was easy, Fred. Each malted milk was shared by four people. One <laughs> one malted milk for four people? Well, you must have lost plenty of weight. Actually, I gained ten pounds on the trip, Fred. I outsmarted the others. How? When the malted milk was served with the four straws... Yes? I would point to a freight train passing by and say, Look, everybody, there goes Burl Ives. Burl Ives. Yes, while the other three were looking under the freight cars for Burl Ives, yes. I would plug up their straws with pipe cleaners. <laughs> You fooled those other suckers. With my clear... (laughs) With my clear straw, Fred, I was the only sucker. Well, well, Basil, now that you've finished your road tour, a laugh startled me, something... Well, Basil, now that you... (laughs) Now that you've finished your road tour, I suppose you're relaxing. No, Fred, I'm I'm busy with my radio program for Fatimas. Fatima cigarettes? Uh, Yes, I smoke nothing but Fatimas, Fred. Uh, They're the new long Fatimas. Oh, you smoke Fatimas because they're longer? Uh, Yes, I have rather a lengthy nose. I notice, yes. (laughs) Uh, You know, when I try to light an ordinary-sized cigarette... Yes? I exhale through my nostrils and blow out the match. Oh, I see. Yes. Now, with a new long Fatima, yes. I can rest my nose on the cigarette while I'm lighting it. Oh, say, that's comfort while you're yes. smoking it. Yes. Yes. Well, about your uh, <laughs> about your radio show, Basil, I know it's a mystery program. Yes, Fred. That's what keeps me so busy. I'm always looking for new mysteries, Dalton. Really? Yes, I picked up, uh, just picked up these mystery books in the bookshop. Let me see. Yes, this first one is called uh, The Dirty Chiropractor. What? <laughs> that's a mystery? <laughs> Yes. What is that? What is that? Uh, the dirty chiropractor removes the backbone from one of his patients. Yes. That night, the patient's uh, back lights up, and he realizes too late that the dirty chiropractor has stolen his backbone and given him a neon spine. Oh, he was a dirty chiropractor. Yes, now, Fred, what is that other one you have there? It's called the butcher's undoing. The butcher's undoing, yes. a mystery? Yes. It's about a, a butcher who drugs his wife and hides her in his icebox. Yeah. But the wife is half Eskimo, and only half of her freezes to death. Oh, Basil, now wait a minute, old boy. <laughs> Old chap, these plots that you have here, they sound like something cooked up by the mystery chef on an off night. If you're looking for a real mystery, I have a mystery. Uh, What is your story about, Fred? Well, my story starts with a fanfare. Presenting the Mad Doctor of Downing Street. Oh, death for rubber gloves. I am Sir Hubert Buffington. For years, I was physician to His Majesty the King. Today, I sit here in Old Bailey, waiting to go to the gallows. Why, you ask? I'll tell you. My professional life was happy. Every morning, as I walked into my office, 
My nurse, Miss Tuttle, would say... Good morning, Doctor. Good morning, Miss Tuttle. What's on my schedule today? At two o'clock, you're to remove a kipper bone from Sir Stafford Pip's lower lip. Yes. <laughs> then at three o'clock, for an hour, you pick at the socialized medicine clinic. Uh, <laughs> yes. And at four o'clock, you pose for a cigarette testimonial. Splendid. I don't know what we doctors would do without these testimonials for cigarettes. Is my T-zone chart ready? Yes, sir. Well, sterilize my pointer and I'll be off. My professional life was happy, but my domestic life was hectic. My wife, Lady Buffington, was constantly nagging me to buy her things. One morning I refused to buy her a television set. That night, as I came in the door... Chung, my houseboy, was waiting for me. Oh, Mr. Buffington. Uh, yes. Oh, something yes, yes, terrible yes. happened. Uh, yes, uh, Chung, see Lady Buffington leave uh, by back door with a double bag. Also find a note. A note? Uh, here is a note. Sir Hubert, you have finally gone too far with this inhuman stinginess. You know I'm crazy about pictures. This morning you refused to buy me a television set. All is over between us. I have run away with Cecil Spoonmaker. Signed, Lady Buffington. Cecil Spoonmaker, the name haunted me. Who was Cecil Spoonmaker? I searched for three months in vain. Then one day I was in my office trying to get my thumb out of a test tube when the door opened. <laughs> a stranger confronted me. Well, say, Doctor, Doctor, you've got to help me. Uh, your name, please. Spoonmaker. Cecil Spoonmaker. Cecil Spoonmaker? I say, have you ever been in London before, Mr. Spoonmaker? Oh, yes. Three months ago, I was here with the circus. The circus? Yes, I'm the tattooed man. I'll take my shirt off. I say, your right arm is the Tower of London. And here on my left arm? The White Cliffs of Dover. Yeah, yeah. Look here on my chest. My word, an enormous monkey climbing up your chest. His outstretched paws on your Adam's apple. Well, Doctor, that's why I'm here. I want the monkey taken off me chest. Taken off? I've been asked to give a command performance. I've got to make room for Winston Churchill. The monkey has got to go. <laughs> Very well. I shall give you an injection of energy. Energy? Well, it's a cleaning fluid. Precisely. When the energy gets into your bloodstream, that monkey will disappear. Right Righto. Here's the energy solution. Now, hold out your arm. Righto. Ow! Oh, that's all right. Now, there we are. I'll just sterilize this needle. I'll be back right away. Yeah. Oh, doctor. That injection. Something's happening. I can't breathe. Help, doctor. Something more clear, Holmes. Calling detective one long pan. Proceed at once to Sir Hubert Buffington's foul play suspected. Calling one long pan, detective one long pan. Ah, oh, greetings and shalom alakum, kiddie. Detective one long pan, oh, you for Sam Speed on job. All right, Louis, lop the gun, long pan catching everyone. All right, Louis, lop the gun. Oh, oh, long pan, long pan, an exceptional voice tonight. Maybe catch him fan letter from Jackie Eigen. I see. <laughs> I say, old oh boy, will you stop that infernal racket? Who are you, big boy? I am Sir Hubert Buffington, physician to His Majesty. You, you doctor, doctor? Yes. Uh, who is a party on floor with shirt off? Who is uh, party? He's one of my patients, a Mr. Cecil Spoonmaker. Oh, holy smoke, holy smoke. You, you, you some doctor. Long pie stick to Dr. Pepper. Meantime, <laughs> meantime, I'll ask you for murder. Murder? That's ridiculous. Say, hey, victim body covered with blue, blue picture. Uh, Mr. Spoonmaker was the tattooed man with the circus. Tattoo on arm? Yes, sir, that's the Tower of London. Oh. And these here, these are the White Cliffs of Dover. Well, you, you, you skip travel off, skip travel off. <laughs> what is this on a chest? Fur coat? No, it's a monkey. Monkey's poor leech up and grab dead man's Adam's apple. Uh, Mr. Spoonmaker came to have the monkey removed. Something fishy here, Dr. Long Pan suspect monkey business. Oh, Dr. Buffington. Oh, ho, woman in her case. Who, 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 who is floozy? Uh, this is my nurse, Miss Tuttle. Oh, turn around, baby. Long Pan give you fast flisk. <laughs> Take your slimy hands off oh, me. Oh, you'll fess up, Missy. Where were you when Missy, when Missy Spoonmaker bumped off? Where were you? Where were you? I was in the doctor's laboratory with two loaves of rye bread making some black penicillin. <laughs> what, what happened? Dr. Buffington, 
Washington came out of his office and said he had given the patient an energy injection to remove some tattooing. Very good, very Suddenly good. Suddenly there was a scream. Dr. Poppington and I rushed into the room. Mr. Shalom, make our wash dead. He had gone to that big sideshow up yonder. There's my alibi, long fan, and it's airtight. Confidential, a long pan stump, but not for long. <laughs> who, who, who else in house, Dr. Bluffington? Oh, well, only my houseboy, Chung. I'll ring for him. Oh, long pan, girl, Chung, China boy, to fairly well. China, click of people, duck suit for one long pan. Are you Ling, Mr. Buffington? Chung! Long pan! Ding ho! Oh, ding ho! Sing woo poo, sing tong! Oh, hui fang ling lung mugai pan! Oh, mugai pan! Oh, ding woo poo! Oh, la ma ho, la ma ho, la ma ho, la ma ho! Uh, you two seem to know each other. Chung, Chung, uh, Long Pan go to school together. Uh, Hong Kong, you class of 28. To the table down at Long Fong. <laughs> to the table to Oh, well, the class the reunion over. Chung, go back to oh, kitchen. Oh, you'll catch him later, Chung. Finish off a mouth song together. Uh, if you care to leave now, Long Pan, I won't charge you for this visit. Uh, show him to the door, Miss Tuttle. Right this way, Long Pan. Not so fast. Long Pan, Lee, Sam, and Bobby. Oh, oh, you'll see. Tattoo Man also have picture inside coat pocket. You'll see. Snap a shot. My word, it's Lady Buffington. My word, it's my wife. My word. With Lady Buffington, a snap shot is a dead man on floor, Mr. Spoonmaker. Maybe, Dr. Buffington, you, you, you explain why wife in picture snapshot with Mr. Spoonmaker. Yes, Long Pan. Lady oh. Buffington was mad about pictures. Uh, three months ago, I refused to buy her a television set. To get even with me and to see some new pictures, Lady Buffington ran off with this tattooed man, Cecil Spoonmaker. And today, when he come into your office, you get, you get revenge. You personally kill Cecil Spoonmaker. Uh, how could I kill him? I wasn't even in the office when he died. Yes. Yes, Long Pen. I told you Dr. Buffington was in the laboratory with me. Not necessary, Doctor. Be in office when give patient fatal injection. Fatal? Absurd. I merely gave him an injection of energy. Here's the bottle. Formula on um, bottle K two SO four A O seven number now change Butterfield eight two oh nine nine. What's in that bottle? Not in the chain, Mr. Butterfield concentrated solution alum. Alum alum alum. Alum, alum. good alum. heavens. I must have made a mistake. Make a mistake on purpose, Dr. Buffington. But how could the alum kill him? You see, on tattooed man's chest, big monkey. Paw of monkey leech up and hold Adam's apple. The monkey's paws right around his throat. Exactly. Alum shrink Mr. Spoonmaker's body. As Mr. Spoonmaker shrink, monkey's paw close tighter and tighter around neck. Finally, monkey's paw choke Mr. Spoonmaker to death. You fess up, Dr. Muffington. You put tattoo man out of picture. I'm no match for you, Ron. Oh, and no I confess, oh. Mr. Spoonmaker stole my wife. I killed him. Very good. No time to waste. Only 30 seconds left. Mystery solved. Will I get the gallows, Ron Pam? Confucius say, man who shrank other man bound to go away for a long stretch. Oh, oh long pen hot tonight. Ping pong anybody? Thank you. <laughs> Ones are joining us tonight. Here's a tip off on what they're saying in Detroit these days. The word is it will pay you four dollars to keep your present car in top notch condition. And the way to do that is to bring it back home for service, home to your Ford dealer. Thank you and good night. Good night. This is NBC, the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs> 